and then use at least two chat commands. So not everybody had a chance to finish their homework. That's fine. I understand things happen. Those of you that do have something to show, um, anybody want to volunteer to go first? Winnie's trying to figure out her technical difficulties, so someone besides Winnie? Okay, pass on his way, so. Okay, well, while you're working with Yummy trying to figure out your issue, Winnie, does anybody else have a sequence ready that they can show? This is one of those days where I feel like we need a pop quiz now because nobody did their homework. I did see Lil's, so I can give Lil a pass because I actually watched her. And some of you don't own the HUD, so you can't do the homework. <laughs> Your S is on strike. <laughs> hey, Path. Okay, so let me ask this question. Um, who has actually used the HUD to dance? Like you've actually used it in a performance? Yes or no? Okay. Okay. Winnie, don't panic. We'll we'll figure it out. There's there's something wrong somewhere, but we'll find it. And that's one of the challenges to using this HUD is that you know a missing comma somewhere can trip up your whole routine. So it is very important to pay attention. Um, and Yemi and I were discussing this a little bit before class that several of you apparently still have. Um, issues understanding how events work. So while Yummy works with Winnie to try and figure out what's going on, Yummy sent this to me, so I'm going to ask her to multitask a little bit, but I'm going to throw something out there we didn't really intend on, but okay. Yummy made up a pop quiz. Yay! So it comes in handy. Now, I will tell you after reading through this, I'm not even sure I know the answers to all of these. So I think I will just pick out a couple of them and we'll talk about them as a class and see if we all understand what the issues are, if there's any issues, and how to fix them when we're discussing events. Okay, so she's just kind of given us a little um, excerpt or snippet from an events card and then we're supposed to look at it and see what's wrong if there is anything wrong and how we would fix it if there is something wrong. Everybody following me so far? Okay, so I'm just going to pick a couple of them and I'm just going to paste them here in local chat and then we'll see um, 
if it's incorrect and if it is, how we fix it. It's okay, Path. Okay, so here's the first example. Those are the first three lines on your events note card. Is there a problem with this? Yes. And what's the problem? Well, the end is missing. I don't think she put that on, on any of this. So you do need an end, but is there anything else wrong? The comma between trace and on is supposed to be there, isn't it, Yummy? That's what I remember. Okay, now the trace can be on or off. That has to do with what the HUD chats at you. So, it says elapsed. So what does that mean when you Okay, so, okay, let me go back to this. What is the difference between elapsed and duration? Okay, who else isn't sure? It's not a trick question. <laughs> Okay, duration is the default, okay, and duration is the same way that we do um, the old bar and huddles commands where you had the dance name, the pipe symbol, and then the amount of time or the duration that you wanted the dance to run. Okay, so when you're talking about duration, that's the same thing. You would have the number of events, whatever the name of your event is, and then the number of seconds that follow that, that last number, is the number of seconds you want that particular event to last. Okay, so that's duration. When you're talking about using elapsed, elapsed is more like the spot um, PD timeline. So you would start at 1 and then go through. So you might have event number 1 starts at 1 second, event number 2 starts at 20 seconds. So event number 1 actually lasts 19 seconds. Okay, do you see the difference? Is everybody understanding that? Okay, cool, Winnie. Glad, glad you found it. Okay, so, oh, trace must be in all caps, gotcha, see, I missed that. Okay, so trace must be in all caps, it can be on or off, that just has to do with what the HUD chats to you as the owner. It can be duration or elapsed, however you want to do it, so whichever way makes more sense to you. I would say use that method and stick with it. If the elapsed makes more sense to you because it's more like the spot on timeline, then use that. If the duration makes more sense to you, then use that. Um, and yes, each event needs to be at least one second long, okay? And you can't start it at zero. 
so it needs to be at least one second because the the way the HUD would read what I posted before was that event number one lasts no seconds, so nothing's going to happen. Okay, so, and you could change it to from elapsed to duration, but then you would still need to put in a number besides zero after the fade in set to tell it how long that event is going to last. Okay, Path, you had a question? I'll type up duration while I'm waiting on past question, sexy. Okay, hang on a second, let me answer, let me show sexy first and then Path will, will talk about yours. Okay, so if I was going to use duration and my first, say my first event, was, I wanted it to last 25 seconds, sexy, this is what it would look like in my note card. Well, and that's not strictly true either. Let, let me just put it this way. Here, if I was using duration, here's what my first event would look like. You're not jumping ahead path, it's just that events are confusing and I clearly didn't do a good job of explaining them because you all have so many questions. Okay, so Sexy, does that make sense to you the way I wrote it? Is that clear? Okay. Okay. No, it, I mean, Yemi has said that you guys have asked her all kinds of questions. So to me, you know, if one person fails the test, I can blame it on that person. If all of you fail the test, that's my fault. Okay. So let's go back and, and talk about this for a second. Okay. So let me just explain to you for a minute what I do. Okay. And, and why I do it the way that I do. Um, I typically use duration instead of elapsed. Again, it doesn't make any difference which one you use, just use the one that's more comfortable to you. Duration is the one I started using and so that's just what I use. I pretty much always make my first event only one or two seconds long, okay? Because your events don't fire until after you press play. So there's a little bit of a delay. And when you're talking only a second or so, it's not noticeable, but it's not quite the same and Yemi, if I misspeak about anything, please correct me. Um, it's not quite the same as spot, because when you press spot, you can start at zero and everything goes from there. Here, like I said, I, I make my first event one or two seconds. And then when I press play, that first event will fire one or two seconds 
after I press play. So it's not quite instantaneous. Okay, it's not enough that anybody else is going to notice except you, but that's something you need to keep in mind. And Winnie asked me some questions before class. <sighs> yeah, there is a way to do that. But, you know, honestly, I, when I perform, I... You have to do other things, and I, I work, the place I'm dancing right now, I have to open, manually open the curtain. I can't use the HUD to do it. So what I generally do is start my HUD, and then by the time I've clicked on the curtain, everything goes the way I want, okay? Um, it depends on how many things you want to happen at the same time, Winnie, and, and what those things are. I think one of the issues is everybody kind of feels limited because you can only have 20 events. So what I generally do is not only do I start my event number one at one or two seconds in, I generally set up around 15 events. And I'll evenly space them like every 10 seconds or something. I don't know that I'm going to need 20 events at the time that I start, but then I have them if I need them. And if I need to move things around because something needs to happen a little bit faster or a little bit slower, I can adjust the time so that I can make it happen the way that I want. Okay. Now, having said that you're limited to 20 events, there are other things that are tied to events. So yes, you can only have 20 events, but you can have, of those 20 events, something happen on each one of those events in your auto effects, say. So that's 20 things. You can have 20 things happening on your auto emote. So that's an additional 20 things. You can have 20 things happening on your auto adorn, so that's an additional 20 things. They're all happening tied to those 20 events, but it's not that you can only have 20 things happen, okay? And there are ways when you get in binds to use wait times and lead times and delays and things like that. I purposely haven't showed you guys that because it's confusing and there are rules about things you can and can't do. And so having used some of those, I felt it was easier to just give you guys one thing at a time instead of trying to throw a bunch of things at you. Okay. And okay, so Winnie had an example of a question. She wanted something to fade in and something to fade out. Her intention is to fade them simultaneously but you can't have two events happen at the same time. You can't have event number three happen at the same time as number four. But what you can do is have event three happen at, say, 31 seconds. And then if you're using elapsed, you can have event number four happen at 32 seconds. There's only a second in between. That's not really enough time that anyone but you is going to notice. And it's not, shouldn't, affect how she wants things to work. Okay? Does that make anything clearer for you guys? I want to go over some more of these examples from this quiz that Yummy sent because I think that's, you have to understand events or it's not going to work for you and you're going to get frustrated. Okay, so let's look at another one. I would say, generally, Winnie, I probably reorder mine. Um, not necessarily reorder, but I'll adjust the times. I would say in creating a routine, I probably at least three, maybe more. I will go in and adjust the times for my events. Well, and when you want to add something, Winnie, that's why I say I generally put in more events than I think I'm going to need. That way, if I need to go back and do something, then I don't necessarily have to add an event. And it is more work up front. I won't tell you that it's not. It's not as quick as spot. Okay, it does go faster once you get used to it, 
but there are no shortcuts with a lot of these things. However, once you get it done and you get it down, your routine works every single time. Every single time. Okay, so path as far as understanding events goes, I think some of it comes down to as long as you understand the mechanism behind events and how the events make the HUD work and how things are tied to your events, I don't think you necessarily have to understand why Yummy created them the way she did. It's a different mindset. It's a different way of thinking. It's a different way of creating. I don't in the process of creating a routine think okay this is going to be my opening and at you know 30 seconds in I'm going to have this happen and here I'm going to have particle effects I don't I don't have it all planned out that far ahead some people do and so they find it really really easy to use the RTs because it fits with the way that they create I don't do that and so while I understand how they all fit together, it's not necessarily the way that in my perfect world it would work. <laughs> okay, so as long as you understand, like I said, the mechanism behind them and how other things are tied to those events, that's what I want you to understand. Okay, and, and yes, I mean, like I told you before, there's 16 different ways to do something with the HUD. So if you get stuck, ask, and you know we'll try and help you however we can. Um, it may be a way that you haven't used before. It may be that we say, well, try it this way. Sometimes it's just you playing around with it and saying, well, I can do it this way instead, and that works okay too. Okay. So let's look at another example of events and see. Okay. So there's no end on this one. What else is wrong with this one? Because there's a couple of mistakes in here. Okay, trace is not capitalized. What's wrong with the times? Right. This one is using the elapsed method. So if you're going to use elapsed, again, it's like that timeline. So if the first event happens at 15 seconds into your routine, the second event can happen at five seconds into your routine. Either you need to switch out what you want to happen or you've made a typo, which is, I'm assuming, what she was intending in this case. So how could we fix this one to make it correct? Yeah, you can make event two anything between 15 and 35, and then it would work. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so let's look at another example. Is there anything wrong with this one? Trace is not capitalized again. Anything else? Okay, two and three are the same time. Is that a problem? Ding, ding, ding. Megan and Jess get gold stars. Okay, it's duration, it's not elapse. So remember, we said there's a difference between duration and elapse. Duration says, this event happens for this many seconds, okay? It's not a timeline, 
when you're using duration. So event number one lasts for 15, event number two lasts for 10, event number three lasts for 10. So if you're using duration, your numbers can be the same. They don't happen at the same time, Zed. So if this was my note card and I press play, event number one would fire 15 seconds after I press play. Event number two would fire 25 seconds after I press play, and event number three would fire 35 seconds after I press play. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Okay, let's try one more. What's wrong with this one? Trace needs to be capitalized. Okay, yes, 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 exactly. This one is elapsed, so you can't have all your events firing at 15 seconds in. Okay, so how could we change this one to make it work with elapsed? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you guys are getting it. So yes, Cherry's right. The first one can be 15 seconds. The next one can be anything after 15. Whatever you set for number two, number three can be anything after that number. Okay, so that's correct. Or like Sexy said, you could just change the elapsed to duration and then it would all work. Any of those methods will work. Okay, so does everybody feel like they have a better handle on it now? Path, you have a question? The only place that you have to set a lapse or duration is on the events note card. Once you set it on the events note card, the HUD knows what to do. It's just a matter of you keeping in your mind, okay, I'm using duration, so as you're doing events, knowing how to set it up versus the elapsed. But the only place that you set that is on the actual events note card. So once you pick, that's why I said, once you pick a method that makes sense to you, just use it, okay? Whichever one that is, pick the one that makes sense to you and use that one. And then don't worry about all the other stuff, okay? Because my goal, like I said, with these classes is that you guys actually use the HUD. Because if I can't get you to understand how it works and use it, then I've wasted everybody's time and you guys have wasted your money. Because if you don't understand how it works, you won't use it. And I want you to use it. That's why I said, you know, anytime you guys have questions to ask, ask me, ask Yummy, ask in the group, you know, I, I want to help anybody that wants help with this, okay? Okay, so let's, let's just do one more to make sure we got it. What's wrong with this one? Trace needs to be all caps. What else? Okay, can't, shouldn't have your first event set at zero, so what would you change it to? Okay, let's just change it to one or two, either one works. What else do you need to do? Yes, PATH, exactly. Duration or elapse needs to be in all caps. Whichever one you're using, it doesn't matter, but it needs to be in all caps. So, yes.
Okay. I think we've got it. All right. So Winnie has figured out her issue, I think. Anybody else want to volunteer? Oh, are you still working on it, Winnie? Well, that's okay, Path, if you haven't road tested it, if you want to just hop up here and we'll see what happens. Okay, that's fine. Let me get out of your way. So whenever you're ready, Pat. That's okay. It's, it's been a busy week for everybody, I think. Are you trying to change entire outfits? Okay. Did you set it all up in one RLV folder or did you make a couple of different folders? Is that something I want to talk about too? Okay. Okay. Um, Path, remind me to get with you after class and we'll kind of look at and see maybe what happened on your um, note cards or something to see why it didn't work. What I wanted to, th <laughs> you didn't break it. I'm, I probably didn't tell you something. Um, we talked about the RLV needed to be turned on, so make sure you have that done. And we talked about how to make the Adorn folders. And I think Yemi sent out a note card with some additional information on that. And, and 
you should have some notes from last class about um, doing the adorns. Okay, one of the things that I didn't mention was using or setting max groups override. If you'll wear your head, edit your head, and go into the note cards and go into the config note card, If you scroll down almost to the bottom of the config note card, there is an entry that says max groups override, and it probably has a zero. And I may explain this incorrectly, so if I do, you may please correct me, but what I typically do is I go in and I set my max groups override to 20. When you leave it at zero, there's max groups override and then there's something also that the HUD checks for that I think is just max groups is the name of it. I can't remember exactly, but if one is bigger than the other, then it causes things not to fire correctly. So I just got in the habit early on of going in and making my max groups override 20 so that I didn't have to worry about it. Winnie. Mm-hmm. What is the problem? I've never seen it do that, so clue us in. <laughs> no, this is the point of the class. I mean, I'm, I actually like it when people make mistakes because then it's a chance to say, okay, let's talk about this and, and figure out what we should and shouldn't do. So is part of this issue the max groups override, Yummy? Okay, so the max groups override is why it says cannot auto announce at the first part. Okay. It's probably zero because I think that's the default. Has everybody able to find Max Groups Override on the config card? Okay. Okay. Yeah, while while we're in here doing it, you guys, I would just change it to 20, save your note card, and then because you're changing the config note card, you have to reset your HUD in order for it to take. The way I remember it, and, and Yemi may be able to explain it better than I do, there's 
that max group, groups override looks at or, or tells the HUD do this many events. So if it's at zero, it's not going to do anything. So that's totally my fault because I meant to tell you guys that on the very first day and I did not get it in my notes or I went over it and skipped over it um, because it's very important. So it needs to at least be the same number as your events. So that's why I said I generally go in and just change it to 20 because that's the most events that you can have. So if you just change it to 20 and leave it there, then you don't have to worry about it. I think because it was set to default zero because Yummy's intention was, you know, some people may only use three events in a routine. Some people may use 10. Some people may use seven. I, I tend to use more than I probably need just because again I don't think when I create in terms of events maybe someday I'll get there but yes it won't hurt anything for that max groups to be more events than you actually use So is everything working for you now, Winnie? Okay. Does anyone besides Winnie have homework to show? Okay, Sexy, if you want to go ahead and try while we're waiting for Winnie. Yeah, you added it. And she set up particles. Yay. And it removed. Excellent. No, those are the default emotes from the HUD. Did you make your own emote note card and put it in the HUD? Okay. So when you want to do your own emotes, so you changed the MRED demo card in your HUD to the emotes that you wanted. Okay, did you reload the emotes note card after you changed it? Okay. <laughs> and sometimes if you change three or four different note cards, like you're working on a routine and you go through and you change, you know, an emote and you change an adorn, 
and maybe you change something else, maybe you update an event or something, you can just reload them all using the menu or a lot of times if I have changed that many note cards, I'll just do a quick reset and then that should reload everything for you. Yes, reset will reload everything. Once you change the note cards and save it, if you don't actually use the menu to reload, if you just reset the HUD, it should reload everything for you. But that just goes to show you, you know, it doesn't have to be super complicated just to add something or to do a chat command. So, okay. Has Yemi got you all figured out yet, Winnie? Okay. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, like I said, clearly I didn't do a good job of explaining some of these things. Zed. And when he wants to perform this tonight, so we'll get it figured out for her. Okay, so while she and Yemi work on that, I'm going to talk about the, the last couple of items, okay? When you get the um, Performer Series, it comes with an extra HUD called the Stage Site. So if you have it and you have it unpacked, go ahead and wear it. If you don't have it unpacked, you should be able to res it and unpack it here if you want, or you can just follow along while um, we talk about it. Whatever you want to do, it's fine with me. This is just kind of an extra item that I wanted to go over to talk to you about. Um, this is an item that lets you set up your camera angles. So if you've ever been to Gorilla Burlesque where they set up the camera angles so that you sit in the chair and it directs your camera, this is sort of the same thing, okay? Except this is for you as a performer, not you as an audience member. Yummy actually made three versions of the stage site, so if you didn't buy the gold package and you don't have it and you want it, you can go to Marketplace and get it. There's three different versions. The first version is only 250 linden and it's no copy and it only lets you set up one angle. If you want it, you can get it. I know Clark likes it and he's recommended it. There's a 750 linden copyable version of the same one. However, each HUD only allows you to set up one camera angle. So even if you get the copyable version, you'd have to wear more than one HUD to have more than one angle. Okay? If you purchase the Performer Series, or if you got the gold package, it comes with the third version of the Stage Site, which is called the Stage Site Plus. It lets you set up to three angles, and it lets you do this for up to 11 venues. Okay, so this is a camera HUD basically that would let you set up to 33 angles. I don't see anybody needing that many, but they're there. Now, the reason this is useful is for um, if you perform at more than one venue or if you have a lot of trouble camming around, especially when you're someplace that gets really laggy, there's a lot of people or SLs just being SL and it's really laggy, then you can cam around quickly without having to worry that you're going to cause yourself to crash. Okay. One of the things that you can do is set up a 
viewing angle backstage if that's where you are so that you can see yourself, you can see your other dancers, if you're doing a group routine, whatever you need. You can set up a viewing angle so that you're looking at the stage so that you can see where if you need to jump on movers, if you can see that everybody's in position, whatever you need. There's also a way to configure the tip jar. So maybe you frequent someplace or maybe you need to sign in to a HUD at some place you perform to sign into the tip jar. You can zoom your camera over there really quickly with one click rather than trying to camera around and find it. Okay. You do have to do some work up front by setting up the camera angles, but once you have it set, especially if you perform at more than one place, once you have the camera angles set for that place, then you can use the HUD and it's all set for you every time you perform. Now, you do have to wear an additional HUD for this if you want this, so it's entirely up to you. I have used it when I go places and I take photos. Um, for instance, I go to Wynn's show a lot, so when I go there, if I have this set up, then I have a button that I can click that takes me to a full-on view of the stage. I have some zoom angles I can set up so that I can zoom in or out. I can zoom over to the tip jar without me really having to do much of anything except click in one place. And it also leaves me the option of you can turn it off so that you can camera around wherever you want and then turn it back on later if you want to. Okay. If you're wearing the HUD, if you click on the stage site word, it brings up a blue menu and you can see the zoom levels, there's up to five zoom levels, the tip jar, and then venues. There's a venue button that you can click and you can set up, like I said, to 11 different venues. If you bought the gold package, there should be a box, let me look at the number, a box PE11 that says stage site. But yes, it's a separate HUD, okay? If you, and if you don't want to use it, that's fine. I just, it's handy sometimes, so. If you open the HUD, it's got a note card in it. Shh, yummy, I haven't got there yet. If you open the stage site HUD, if you click on it to edit it and go to the contents, there's a cam params note card, and that's where you set up the angles. So you would open the note card so that you can put the angles you want, and then you need to capture the angles. So for instance, if I wanted to capture the angle here, I would just set up my note card, or set up my camera, I'm sorry, to wherever, you know, however close or far to the stage that I wanted it to be for my, what we're calling the default angle, okay? So I would be pulled back far enough that I could see the whole stage, the curtains and all of that, so that I could get a wide shot of whatever the performance is. And then you click on once you have your camera positioned, click on the stage site word, get your blue menu, and then there's a button on the bottom right that says Snap HUD 5. If you click that, you should get some chat in local that looks like this. And it's owner only chat, so you're the only one that'll see it. But you'll get something like that. And then all you're gonna do is copy from the bracket. You don't have to copy where it says HUD focus and position, but copy at the brackets after that, copy the vector information, and then put it into your CAM params note card wherever you want that to be, okay? And when you open that CAM params note card, you'll see that it's got different venues, so you can set up the names for the venues as you want them and which ones you want to go where. So that's your default angle. Then to set in your zoom angle, you would just zoom in really close, like maybe to the back wall of the stage, because you're probably doing this when there's no one on stage. And do the same thing, hit that snap HUD button to get another HUD focus in position.
okay? And that's your zoom in max. Once you have those two vectors, you would save it, save the note card, and then reset your HUD. And then you could come here, click the button and say venues, oh, I'm at cat and mouse, and your camera angles would be all set up, okay? And you can do the same thing, direct your camera to be focused on the tip jar, and put your angle in where it says venue tip jar, and then you're all set up for that. The buttons on the HUD, the camera button takes your camera, well that also gives you the vector information. The plus and minus will let you zoom in and out using the HUD rather than you doing it yourself manually. The heart is the tip jar, so that takes you to the tip jar. The crosshairs takes you to that default stage view. And then the two circular arrows let you release yourself from the HUD or put yourself back on the HUD. Okay, and I realize this is a really quick and dirty explanation of it, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So if you're interested in using it, especially for if you're a performer who performs at more than one venue, it might come in handy. If you bought the gold version, then you should have this in your package. Okay, and if you don't want to use it, don't. It's not going to hurt anybody's feelings. Well, it's not going to hurt my feelings. Um, however, if you don't want to go to all that fuss and you don't want to wear an extra HUD, you can use your own HUD. Okay, it's got information in there, Megan, for it, but I don't know if the camera angles are correct. I, I've not gone to all of those places <laughs> to see if it actually works, so you may need to change some of the camera angles. However, on the actual artiste HUD itself, if you'll look down at the bottom, the very last one on the right-hand side is called AutoCam. And this is something I just discovered last week. So I'm sharing this with you just in case you might find it useful. This lets you set up one or two camera angles. That's the most you can have is one or two. With, but then it's all in one HUD rather than having to wear a separate one. Okay. You set up your camera angles just like we talked about before. You know, position it where you want. If you're going to use this via the HUD, the artiste HUD, what I would probably do is set up one where I'm viewing the stage, so there's a default view, and then either one backstage or one for the tip jar, depending on which one you're going to need more, and that depends on what venue you're at. If you open up your HUD and go into the note card, you'll see that there's a cameras note card in there. Okay. And it's got a My Stage Default, a My Zoom In Max, and then it's got some S buttons numbered. Ignore the S buttons, I couldn't get them to work. Okay. What I did manage to do was I set up a default view of the stage so that I could see the whole stage. And I set up that angle. You click on the button next to the auto cam and you'll get a separate menu from the regular artiste menu. Okay, and it looks a lot like the one from the Stage Site Plus. You hit Snapshot from that menu to get your camera angles. Okay, and then you would copy your vector information into the Stage Default. And then for the My Zoom In Max, you can either set it up as a zoom angle or you can set it up to be anywhere else you want to view, whether that's backstage or the tip jar or whatever. Just remember that that's where you have it set. So for example, when I did it, I set up my stage default view so that I could see the entire stage. And then in the My Zoom In Max entry, I saved it to be the tip jar because I actually have to look at the tip jar to log in. Okay, I have to touch it to log in. So then when I touch that auto cam button and I get my menu, I can just click either the My Stage Default button or the Zoom Level 1 button and it will automatically click my camera over to 
wherever I have that view set up. And that is just so that, again, it's an easier uh, built-in way. Instead of having to wear a separate HUD, you could set up a couple of quick angles for yourself if you need them. And again, this is um, not anything you have to use. It's just something I found that was a helpful, I thought. So, okay, so again, that's a really quick and dirty method. If you guys have any questions about that or about using the stage site, I'll be more than happy to answer those because I know I just kind of went over those really quickly, but I know several of you have other things to do today, and so I was trying to get done. Does anybody have any questions about that? I've bored you all to death. Get out my drum set and wake everybody up. Okay, so if nobody has any questions, just at you know at some point if down the line, if you decide that you want to use either the stage site or the AutoCam, and you want to me to go over again how to use it, just let me know and I'll be happy to do that. Or you can contact Yummy, and I'm sure she'll be happy to help as well. Okay. So, I don't know if Winnie's finished fixing her issues yet. Did, did Winnie get all sorted out? Oh, you're still working with her. Okay. Okay. Well, that's all I had to present that was new for class today. We'll work with Winnie, and if anybody has any questions, I'll hang around for a bit to ask questions. Um, in the meantime, before anybody disappears, though, I am working on the next class, which is the Intermediate Artiste. No, you didn't mess it up, Winnie. Clearly, I didn't do a very good job of teaching some things, or you guys wouldn't have had so many issues. Um, so I am working on the Intermediate Artiste, and that is going to be the class where I introduce you to the palette as mover, okay? And I, I originally think I was being a little too ambitious with what I wanted to cover because the palette does so many things. So I'm going to pull back a little bit, and on the palette class, we're going to learn how to use the palette as a mover. And that's what I'm going to plan on. If we have time to learn some of the extra things that the, the palette will do, then I will show you those. But for now, hopefully you all understand how to use the HUD well enough to use it with a spot mover. And if you have any questions about how to accomplish that, just let me know. And I really, really encourage you to try and use it in a performance. It's a little scary at first, I know. But once you get used to using it, it really is fairly simple. Um, at least in my experience. Maybe my routines are just simpler than others, I don't know. But I, once you get used to the way it's set up and the way it works, then it's good, okay? So I will be planning on starting the palette class on the 14th of February, so that's two weeks from today, and it'll be at the same time at noon. So if there's anybody who can't make that or doesn't want to make it, I'm just going to assume that everybody here will be interested in the next class. So if you're not interested, just, you know, let me know so that I know not to wait for you or, or to expect you for class. Okay, that's enough out of me. I'll shut up. If you don't have any questions and you have something to do, please feel free to go. If you have questions and you want to hang around for help, please stay and I'll be happy to answer questions. Zed, you have a question? Megan, you guys, I'm everybody, Cherry, Lil, Jess, 
Becca, Path, Sexy, Winnie, Zed, and especially Yummy, thank you so much. I do really appreciate everybody coming here, and, and I, I hope I did right by everybody. Yes, Zed, I am coming to your show. Thank you, guys. And if you're going to perform with it, let me know, because I will come and take pictures. So... When you use it, when you get to the point where you're going to use it in a performance, just let me or let Yummy know, and we'll show up and support you while you use it. Well, thank you, Path. I try. <laughs> Bye, Lil. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I mean, I encourage you guys to use the, the books. I, I don't think they're as bad as Yummy seems to think they are. There is some good information in there, but yeah, if you get, if you get to the point where you start banging your head against the wall, you need to ask somebody because it does, doesn't do anybody any good for you guys to bang your head against the wall. I mean, that, that's not what we want for anybody. Yummy and I have discussed, and, and I meant to ask this earlier and I forgot, Yummy and I have discussed whether or not it would be helpful to you guys to maybe put some of the information from the class. I know I handed out note cards, but whether it might be in, helpful to put some of the information from the class up on her website so that you guys had it for reference. Not that I want to just refer everybody to the website because that's not the point, but just sometimes, you know, maybe you need to refresh your memory. I told you guys at the beginning, I myself, even now, keep a cheat sheet of things that I use kind of on a regular basis that I always, like, oh, how do I put that in there again? And so I have it on a cheat sheet so I can find it. And yes, Megan, that's exactly right, that we, you know, nobody can be available 24-7. So if it would be helpful for you guys to have that as an extra resource, then we can get that stuff put up on the website, on the Artiste website, so you guys can access it. Okay, so if you guys think that would be helpful, then Yumi and I will work on getting some of the notes and things from the class and things that we've covered in class up on the website just so that you have them for reference. And I think another thing that I will do is I will go through my own cheat sheet and kind of pick out the things that we've actually covered 
that might be helpful to you guys, and then I will send it out to everybody. Things that you need to look for, you know, like the max groups override, which I forgot to tell you about, the difference between elapsed and duration, just some things like that that'll just be on a note card that you can keep for reference. And I would also highly encourage you to develop your own. It's just easier to go back. Okay, so I agree, Megan, it is hard for us to be accessible all the time. So I will get with Yummy and we will work on getting it um, up on the website so that it's at least there as a resource and I will work on putting together um, a kind of a cheat sheet from these last three classes with things that we've covered and you should know how to do. Okay, and if there's an issue with, okay, Kat put this in here and I have no idea what this means, tell me, let me know. I don't want to be giving out bad information. That was the point of these classes. This is kind of one of those HUDs where I have to get you to that aha moment, but once I get you there, you got it. No, I will vouch for Yummy. I have worked with her on several routines and she will come and stand beside you and you can ask her a million questions and she will not lose her temper while you ask her the dumbest thing that you've already asked 16 times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, like I said, our, our goal is to get you guys to use the HUD. So whatever we have to do to get you there is what we want to do, whether it's 2 a.m. or not. Okay, I'm going to shut off voice and shut up. And like I said, if you have questions and you need help with something, I'll be happy to stick around. I know some of you have performances you need to get to and performances you need to prepare for. So I will let you get to that. And I have a couple questions I need to help people with. So thank you all again for coming. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys back on the 14th.